Hello everyone, welcome to another WordPress tutorial. In this lesson, we will learn how to create a WordPress theme from scratch, which means we'll be writing all of the HTML, CSS, and PHP code ourselves. Now for those of you that stumbled upon this video and are not interested in coding, I will say this. Obviously, one of the strengths of WordPress is that it allows people who would rather not write a single line of code to still create an amazing website. But if you are using a pre-built theme, I guarantee you that in the future, there will be changes that you wish you could make to your website, even if it's as simple as changing the way title text is output or moving an element up or down the page a bit. I can guarantee you that that moment will come. And if you don't have a basic understanding of WordPress themes, making those changes yourself will be tricky and you might need to hire someone to do it for you. But I'm here to tell you that with just a bit of basic understanding, all of a sudden themes are not intimidating, code is not intimidating, and you will have a firm grasp of which file to go to and what code to write to make something happen. So whether you love coding or you really just love WordPress and wanna learn a bit more about how themes work, let's roll up our sleeves and get started. So currently we're looking at a fresh install of WordPress. Now this is on my local computer, you can see localhost. In a previous lesson we learned how to install WordPress locally. Uh, but this particular copy is installed in a folder named WordPress. So here is that folder, and we need to navigate to a certain themes folder so we can create a new theme. So that folder lives within WP content, and then there's a folder named themes. So if we go into the themes folder, we can see that these are the three themes that are provided with WordPress out of the box, but we wanna create a new one. So just create a new folder, and you can name it anything you'd like. I will name this learning WordPress. Next, we'll go inside this new folder that we just created, and we wanna create two new files. So I'll use a text editor, and the first file that we wanna create is named index.php. Okay, and the second file that we wanna create is named style.css. So let's review, we have a folder for our new theme, and within that folder, we currently have two empty files. And let's begin by adding a bit of code to the style.css file. We'll start with a CSS comment to let WordPress know a little bit about our theme. So we can say theme name, and you can type anything you'd like. I'm calling this theme uh, Learning WordPress. You can provide an author name. You can provide a link to the author. I'll just include a link to this YouTube channel. And you can describe your theme or you can provide a version number. There's all sorts of different tags you can use to let WordPress know about your theme. Uh, but for the purposes of this lesson, I think this should suffice. So that's all we need in the style.css file for this exact moment. Now let's hop over to the index.php file and just create a heading that says, hello world. And that's all we need for now, so go ahead and click Save. And then if we go back to our WordPress admin and we click on Appearance in the sidebar, we can then choose our new theme. So we can see that currently the theme name 2014 is activated, but here's our new theme named Learning WordPress. And if we click on it, we can see a little bit more. We can see that it's by this author. And if you click this, it would take you to that YouTube page we linked to. Uh, but if you click Activate on this new theme, and then go ahead and view your WordPress website in the other tab. If you refresh, uh, you can see the new theme that we just created, Hello World. Now, obviously this theme is useless. No one wants a theme that just says Hello World. So let's give ourselves a real world task. If we head over to our posts in WordPress. Uh, we can see that we have two posts, example post and Hello World. So let's give ourselves a goal. We wanna output the title and the text for these posts on our homepage. So let's write the code to make that happen. So let's hop over to index.php, get rid of hello world, and let's open up PHP. If this is your first time seeing PHP, do not worry, it's just a different scripting language. So if HTML is how we define and display our content, PHP is a scripting or programming language that lets us talk to databases, that lets us do more dynamic things. Uh, so for the time being, uh, we're hopping into PHP so we can write code that talks to WordPress and gathers our content so we can output it on the page. Now the first bit of PHP that we will write together is referred to as the loop. 
The loop is central to WordPress, and it's aptly named. What we're going to do is loop through all of the different posts and output them on our page. So here's what the loop code looks like. We begin with an if statement. So if a condition is met, uh, if we have posts, we want to do something. And what do we want to do? We want to loop through all of our posts. So while we still have posts left to loop through, we want to do something with each post. Then we'll end this while statement. Oops. So now any code between this line and this line will get repeated for each blog post. So we can include something like the title and the body text here. But let's go ahead and finish our skeleton logic. So we said, if this condition is met, if we have posts, do this. But what if we don't have posts? So we'll use an if state, or excuse me, the else. And we'll say, go ahead and echo a paragraph that says, no content found. Okay, and then we'll close out our if statement and we're good to go. So now any code we place between this line and this line will get repeated for each post. So let's go ahead and drop out of PHP here and then re-enter PHP on this line. So now we can include plain HTML on, this, on these lines. So we can say h2 title should go here. And now if we refresh our page, we can see that there are two titles, which corresponds with the number of blog posts we have, two. Now watch how easy WordPress makes it to add the dynamic title in here instead of this dummy text. All you need to do is drop into PHP and simply say the title. WordPress has a function named the title, which makes it this easy. Now if we refresh our page, we see that the two relevant titles for our blogs are there, example post and hello world. And yes, in case you're wondering, WordPress makes it very easy to add the actual content. If you believe it or not, they have a function named the content. And if we refresh, we can see that there you have it. The content for each blog post has been added. Now let's go ahead and make these titles links so that if you click on one, then you're only viewing that blog post. So we'll create a hyperlink uh, surrounding that text. And then in, instead of putting a URL in here, WordPress has a really neat function named the permalink. And it's that simple. So now if we refresh, we see that each title is a link. And if we click on it, we're taken to a page with only that post. So now that we have a page that's communicating with WordPress and outputting dynamic data, let's worry about adding a proper header and footer to the layout. So in our index.php file, We'll simply add a line that says get header. And towards the bottom, we'll include a line that says get footer. Yes, it is that easy. So now if we refresh, uh, we can see that there's some sort of header and footer elements. The header consists of our site name and our tagline and then a horizontal rule and the footer has a bit of text as well. But you might be thinking, how can we customize this? We didn't write the code uh, for this header and footer text. So it's very easy. In our theme folder, you can just create a new file named header.php and also another file named footer.php. So now that we created these empty header and footer PHP files, if we refresh our page, we can see that there's no longer a header and footer because these files are completely empty. So now let's add a bit of code to these so we can have full control over our header and footer. So we'll start with header PHP. Now header is not the most exciting file, but it's probably one of the most important files. This is where you include code that all web pages need. So for example, a doc type and your opening HTML tag. Now a quick uh, note here, if we're opening the HTML tag in our header, that means we'll probably wanna go to our footer.php file to close this HTML tag. So in footer, We'll close HTML. Now back to header. Uh, we also want to include a head section. Now we'll get to that in just a moment. But we also want to open the body element. Now again, if we're opening our body element in header, we need to close it somewhere. So in footer, we'll go ahead and close the body element. 
Now let's hop back over to header PHP. There's a few more boring but completely necessary tasks that we need to take care of. So in the head section, uh, we need to define what character set we want to use. Now instead of including uh, a value here, we're just going to let WordPress do the work for us. using this function. Okay, and we also, let's include a line to make our site responsive. So we'll say viewport content equals the width of the current device. And let's include a very simple title. So this is not optimal for search engine optimization. We'll learn how to optimize the title in future lessons, but for today, let's just very simply output the name of the site. So we'll say blog info name, drop out of PHP again, close the title. And then finally, before we close out our head section, uh, we want to use a WordPress function named WP head. And what this will do is later on, if we add different plugins to the site or all sorts of different things, WordPress gets to have the final word. So before we close out head, this way WordPress can add any other code that it wants to automatically add after the code that we manually added. Okay, and then there's just a few more quick boring tasks that we need to complete. So on the HTML tag, we can go ahead and specify uh, which language is being used. So language attributes. And then on this body tag, WordPress has a really neat function named body class. And we'll get into why this is useful later, but basically it's going to allow us to target different pages with our CSS very easily. So for now, whoops, all we need is to open and close PHP and then use a class named body, excuse me, use a function named body class. So now that this heavy lifting is done, we can add the code, which will define what we actually see visually at the top of our page. So for example, the name of the website or the phrase or motto of the website. So we can include a section uh, named site header, and we'll just include the proper code. So we'll say in this heading one element, let's output the name of the website. So that's the blog info function, and then we can pass it a parameter of name that will output the name of our site. And then we can include a uh, heading level five or uh, whatever element you would like. And then output the motto or phrase or tagline for the site. So again, we'll use the blog info function and we'll pass it a parameter of description. Oops. Okay. And now if we refresh the page, we can see that our title and description are in place. Now let's go ahead and make our title a link so that it takes us to the home page of our site. So we will wrap this text in a hyperlink. And then to output the URL for our home, our home site dynamically, we will use the WordPress function named home URL. It's that simple. So now if we refresh, you can see that if we go to example post to only view that post, we can click the header to go back to the homepage. Now, just a quick note, if you wanted to actually change the phrasing of your site name or of your tagline or your description, you don't do that within the PHP files of your theme. You do that in the WordPress dashboard. So for example, you would go to settings and then you can see that this field controls the title of your site and this field controls the tagline. So the key here is that you don't want anything to be hard coded into your theme if possible. You want most data to live within the WordPress dashboard, uh, or in other words, in the WordPress database. Moving on, so let's go ahead and finish our footer.php file because header is complete for the moment. Now we want to use a function named WP footer. If you remember, we used a function named WP head in our head PHP. Again, we're going to use something very similar in footer PHP. This way, uh, if we add plugins or widgets in the future, they get the last say over any code that we insert manually. So right before the body tag, WordPress will automatically get the chance to insert any code that it needs to. So now that that's taken care of, let's go ahead and add a bit of custom text in our footer. So we can create a element with a class of site footer. 
and include inside it will include a bit of text uh, that simply outputs the name of our site and then the year. So blog info name, and then we'll include the copyright symbol and the year. Oops. Okay, so we're using the PHP function name date, and then we're passing it a parameter of capital Y, and that will output the year. So now if we refresh our page, we can see the name of our site, copyright the year. So now we have a custom header, a custom footer, and we have the main content of our blog posts. Let's go ahead and add a bit of styling because currently the site looks quite default and ugly. Uh, so maybe let's change the fonts, maybe add a bit of layout and spacing. So we'll hop over to our style.css file and we'll just write a bit of basic CSS. So we'll say font family, Arial sans serif, font size, 14 pixels, color, how about a dark gray? Okay, so if we refresh, we see that literally nothing changes. And that's because we need to make sure that this style.css file is actually being included uh, when visitors view our page. Now, as with most things in web development, there are many different ways to achieve the same thing. So we could add a link to our style sheet in the header file in this head section. Now, there, I'm not going to say there's a right or wrong way of including your style sheet, but I'll show you my favorite way to do it. It does not involve the head section uh, directly. So actually what we're going to do is create a new file in our theme folder named functions.php. Now whether or not you include your CSS file this way, you are going to need a functions.php file regardless. So this is a good place to start. Now we're going to use PHP to write a function that imports our style sheet. So PHP. And then we're creating a function. We can name it anything we would like. I will name it learning WordPress resources. When I say resources, I mean any CSS or JavaScript files that we will need for our theme. At the moment, we just need the one uh, default style.css. So we'll use the WP in Q style function. And we're just going to pass along the URL of our style sheet. There's a really neat function in WordPress named get style sheet URI. So we use that to our advantage. So our function is complete. Now we just need to add this function so that it actually runs. So add action. Oops. And then we're just going to pass in the name of the function we just created, which is learning WordPress resources. Now this may seem like a long winded way to simply call in a CSS file, but trust me, as your theme grows more complicated and you're importing more files, uh, you will be very glad that you did it this way. So now if we refresh, we can see that the font changes uh, because our style sheet is being included properly. So now we can hop back to our style.css file and continue to improve the appearance of our layout. So uh, let's go ahead and give the text a little bit more line height in between each line. Try this value. Uh, also, let's change the color of the links. Here's a nice uh, blue value. So if we refresh, we can see uh, that there's a bit more spacing in between each line. The links are now using blue. Let's go ahead and give the site a max width. So we'll create a um, comment that says general layout, container, uh, max width, Go with either 920 or 960. We'll center it horizontally. Give it a bit of padding uh, for smaller screens. Okay. Now, if we refresh, nothing will happen because we need to add uh, this container element to our HTML. So there's a corresponding element. So we'll hop over to our header.php. And right after the body tag, uh, we can simply create a div with a class of container. And we can indent this uh, a bit just to stay organized. And then in our footer file, at the very end, right before WP footer, uh, we'll add the closing div uh, for container. And we can indent this just to stay organized. So now if we refresh, we can see that our max width is taking effect. Now let's give ourselves another task. Let's add subtle borders underneath the header, in between each post, and then above the footer. So in style CSS, uh, we can create another section. Uh, I'll call this header and we'll target the site header and just give it a border bottom. How about two pixels solid and medium gray value? 
and then uh, we'll also target the footer so that's site footer and we'll give it a border top uh, same style let's give it a bit of extra space above the footer as well so margin top 30 pixels okay so if we refresh you can see that we have borders uh, below and above our header and footer now let's add a line in between each blog post so to do that we're going to want to head over to index.php and remember uh, we wrote our code so that anything uh, in between this line and this line gets repeated for each post so we'll wrap this content uh, in an article so we'll say article and we'll give it a class of post and then we can indent these lines just to stay organized so then we can use our CSS to target uh, this post element so now we'll say article post uh, border bottom how about two pixels but instead of solid we'll go dotted and how about a lighter color so if you refresh uh, we can see that that's now in place. Let's write a little bit of extra code so that the last blog post doesn't get the border, only all of the ones besides the last post. So uh, we can simply write article post last of type border bottom none. And there you have it. Now I think this represents a good stopping point for this lesson. Let's review what we've learned so far. We've learned how to create a WordPress theme. You simply create a folder in the themes folder of your WordPress install. And then inside that folder, you create these different files that correspond with different parts of your site. So index.php controls sort of the HTML that gets output. Header and footer obviously control the header and footer. Uh, functions is where we're going to include all sorts of neat code. But for now, it's where we are including our style sheet. More will come in this file very soon. And style.css, that's where we give our theme a name and an author and a version, and then obviously all of our styles to control the appearance of the website. Now in the next few lessons, we'll learn that there's much more than just index.php, which controls the HTML. So for example, if we wanted to create a WordPress page, well, instead of index.php, we could create a file named page.php, and that would control the HTML for pages. And also, uh, we can create a file named single.php, and that will control the way that individual post pages are displayed. Uh, so we'll learn that there's much more than just index.php. There's a whole slew of files that you can include in your theme to really get fine-grained control. Now, in our next lesson specifically, we will learn how to insert the navigation menu uh, right towards the bottom of our header so we can hop back and forth between the home page and maybe an about page, so on and so forth. So thank you very much for watching this first video in this video series of how to create a WordPress theme. I hope you feel like you learned something and stay tuned for more WordPress tutorials. Thanks. Bye.